most of the homeless people we meet pretty genuine, nice, you know, down to earth most of the time. Um, I see it as the same person, like we're all the same kind of person, but we all hide our problems and our troubles just to sort of feel comfortable around each other so you don't feel that loneliness. Because most of, I think most of us think that our problems are worse than the other person's. My childhood was, uh, seems like it went really fast. Um, we had seven kids, or well, my parents had seven kids. Um, Nothing to do with TVs or anything. Um, I was in the middle. I, I always felt I was the loner one in the middle, sort of, I don't know, the girls on that side and boys on this side. Um, uh, it was weird growing up because we were Muslim and we got sent to a Christian, and, oh, sorry, a Catholic school. So I've been confused for a long time. Well, I've got five sisters and one brother, and um, I'm the second uh, youngest in the family, and and uh, they all live back in Tasmania, except for my elder sister, she lives in Ningi in Queensland. I lived over here for three years, and I went back to see my parents before they passed away, and I, Looked after my mum till she passed away from melanoma, and I was rock bottom there, and I was at a real bad time in life. When I was living in Denport, I, um, I didn't like I didn't really want to wake up the next day. I didn't have nothing to look forward to. Where you know, I lost everything, lost my parents. Anything like that, lost the place where I lived, lost all my, lost all my gear, lost all my photos, everything like that. That just, that just shattered me, that didn't. And, um, and since I moved to Melbourne, they give him something to live for. Well, before I was homeless, I was a family man. I, I was working, um, I was CSC operator at um, Thomastown. We were fabricating for these buildings, bits and pieces. And um, I'm going through a divorce at the moment. Me and my wife, um, we've got three kids. Seven months ago, I, after 15 years of um, going in and out of bad positions, situations, and dragging my wife and my kids with me, thought that maybe it's time that she, you know, could go her way. And I don't. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but to cut a long story short, I was working at Holden's Engine Company and I acquired a heroin habit when I was 27 years old, and I'm 43 now. And ever since I acquired that heroin habit, my life has not been the same. Me staff at Melbourne, when you're doing something wrong, like, there's always somewhere where you can get something to eat here, like, and I didn't know that, and like, I'm glad I did, because like, there's not services like that back in Tassie, like, which there should be. I'd be more content if I had a job and roof over me, but that's, that's part and parcel of life over there. But, yeah, I don't know how that's going to happen in a few more years, if it starts going the way it is with the homeless, so there's only going to be more people getting homeless. The way the government is at the moment, the rich are getting richer. And the average person is getting worse off and the poorer are getting poorer. As you know, there's, they're trying to pass some law. I'm not too familiar with the laws. But they are trying to pass some law. I think they have passed it. That if you have property or you have belongings that are unattended on the street, they would come and take them. It's, there's a way to go and get your stuff back. They'll give personal property, um, but they won't give bedding or any stuff like that. But um, that's 
mainly the things that people want back is the, you know the stuff that keeps them warm at night and their clothing and things like that not so much the wallet and the mobile phone the council's even shut off the water to the fountains here like there's people like a tourist on a 33 degree day trying to rehydrate their kids they can't get no water and like it's wrong they even shut off the barbecues around there so they couldn't cook and they're treating the, the, uh, the homeless like they're, they're nothing but like they, they like they're scum, you know, there's just a bit of dirt on the street, and it's, it's, not, it's not right. Like, fair enough, there's people out there begging, like, and the ones up around, you know, Swanson Street and that, you see Lana on the, on the footpath, and they're, like, sleeping. Fair enough, like, clean them up, get them out of there, because, like, you're in the public all the time. And, and that's wrong, and, and they're, unfortunately, they're tarring everyone with the same brush. And that's what's happening at the moment. feel let down most of the times if you say hello to somebody most of the times they won't say hello back because they think or assume you're going to ask them for a cigarette or some money I kind of get it you know I feel like it's you shouldn't have to be homeless in Australia or Melbourne or the word hungry is embarrassing to use yeah around here and it's just things like that I see people getting offended by. I don't know what home is anymore. <laughs> I'm not sure what the home part is. It in the world? Is it in a house with a family? Um, is it here with yous? But I'm kind of enjoying my selfish, stubborn, schizophrenic way. I just I'm sure there's something that I have to find here. You have money, 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 but I said money's the root of all evil. You can't buy your happiness. You can try, but just good friends. That's what you need, like just to pick you up when you're feeling down. It's just someone to talk to. I think the choices that anyone makes will affect whatever the outcome is in their life. So it is up to me, I suppose. Um, I can't put it on anybody to change my life for me. And most of the responsibilities we have are our choices, and it won't change unless I do that myself. Care for me, mum. That's that changed a lot of things. That that made me see a real big picture on it, like, just waiting for the inevitable. No, it's going to happen, just waiting for it to happen, like. Some, some things, like, you can't, you, got, you can't control them, but when you're waiting for someone to pass away, that's, yeah, it's hard. And that's, that's what's changed me. That's what's made me who I am now, like, a better person. If you want to take self-pity on yourself, like, you won't, you won't make it. You just, Fade away, just fade away, and just you just sleep, you just sleep forward further down the barrel. Like you got to make it like you got to have, you got to be positive. You got to have self self esteem and that, and self respect. That's how you make make your life. Like you just can't take things for granted. You can't sit back and wait for something to fall in your hands because it doesn't happen. They just don't. You got to get out there and get it and work for it. What do you feel the most regret about in your life? Um, getting locked up. And um, the way it hurt me, Mum. Yeah, that's some of the time I can't get back. I know it hurt her a lot. And that's what I regret the most out of everything. I don't regret anything. I don't think I regret anything. Nothing I did that bad that I regret. Um, gee. Maybe telling my wife I didn't love her when I didn't. Or telling her I did love her when I didn't. Yeah, I think maybe that was it. Saying that I loved her when I felt I didn't. To make her feel like she was loved. So that she would feel good about herself. But I think I lied. So I regret not being honest about that. I don't consider myself fortunate. 
um, maybe the right place at the right time. But fortunately, not really. Everybody has to experience and everybody will eventually learn and experience something of that nature or along those lines. It might not be homelessness, it might not be the way I'm experiencing it. 